the four-day technical test of Arc Raiders is about to get underway. In this video, I'm going to cover all the details you need about that, as well as give you my hallmark detailed frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of the teaser that was just published by Embark Studios. Welcome to episode 10 of Beyond the Walls, the series where I cover current hot topics on Embark Studios games, the finals and the in-development Arc Raiders, their communities and especially Easter egg discoveries. For those of you who have been patiently waiting for an update about the finals Easter eggs, you're in luck because you're going to get two episodes of Beyond the Walls this week. I have a massive video on that almost complete, which will not only fill you in on some significant progress we have made on the game's big Easter egg puzzle, but it will also reveal that we've discovered the inspiration for the entire lore of the finals, so look out for that video in the next day or so. This episode though is dedicated to Arc Raiders, so let's dive in. Today Embark Studios uploaded this short teaser and a bunch of detailed info for what they are calling the Arc Raiders Tech Test, which will run from October 24 to 27. If you'd like to participate in the test, there's a link in the video description below which will take you to the sign up page on Steam. There's also a link to the official Arc Raiders Discord server in the video description, so be sure to join up to that too so you can get the latest updates directly from the developers. Similarly, if you want the latest updates from me and also join what will soon be a rapidly growing Arc Raiders community, be sure to join the Datopia Discord, also linked below, which is run by my teammate Demeister and which we're working on together to make an excellent community for anyone playing Arc Raiders, the finals, other FPS games, amongst others. See you there. Now Embark Studios community lead Oscar Lundberg posted about the tech test in the Art Creators Discord today, writing that access is given randomly and we will distribute invites gradually throughout the test, so if you don't get an invite on day one, you may get one later. Invited participants will also be able to invite two friends after completing four rounds, so if you have a pal with access, check with them. If you participated in the previous closed alpha last year, you will automatically get access to this test. Oscar also added that you need to be at least 16 years of age to participate in the test, and he provided a Google Doc with additional info about the tech test, which gives a bit of an introduction to the game, and also says that while this is the largest play test of Arc Raiders to date, the size of the test is limited. Participants will be randomly selected across Europe, North America, and Asia. The purpose of the test is to understand and assess how the game plays in a live setting, get feedback, and evaluate the player experience across several areas. The tech test will be under a strict NDA. This means that testers are not allowed to talk about the playtest or share images, videos or streams of gameplay. Oscar hammered home the purpose of the tech test by writing, this test is not intended as a public marketing beat for the game. We want to introduce art graders to the world when the game is polished and ready and we need your help to keep the mystery and excitement alive while we finish the game. This is why tech test participants are subject to non-disclosure obligations to preserve the experience for everyone. So it's pretty clear for Embark, this test is definitely not about marketing the game. It's about improving it before they get to the stage where they want to introduce it to a wider audience. The Google Doc also provides the minimum and recommended specs for the game, which you can see here. Pause the video now if you want to spend more time looking at those. The Google Doc then provides some insight about what to expect. Raiders scavenge the surface for vital supplies and materials through quests and loot runs assigned by the traders of Speranza. While scavenging the surface you will encounter enemy arc machines as well as other raiders competing for resources. Engaging in firefights may be the only way out of a tight spot but it's risky too. Sometimes being cautious and staying out of sight is a better option to stay alive. To keep your loot you must reach extraction points risking ambush. Success means getting your hands on crucial materials for crafting and upgrades, or things to sell to the traders for hard-earned currency. Failure means losing everything. So it's pretty clear that Arc Raiders is an extraction shooter by whatever definition you choose. Last year I made a video about a bunch of games that had some sort of extraction process for the player included in them, and to be fair, that list was very loose and included games like Deep Rock Galactic, which really shouldn't have been included. Having said that, it was a list of games followers on my channel had requested me to include in the video, so it probably served its purpose for helping others to find games with an extraction process included in them that 
that they liked. How we as a community define extraction shooters is worthy of a discussion for another video because it's easy to either define the genre too loosely or equally fall into an elitist trap that excludes more casual extraction games. But for now the fact art creators will have you losing everything which presumably means what you brought to the surface with you is enough for us to see it's still aiming to be an extraction shooter by most definitions. The Google Doc goes on to provide us lots of awesome info that I was delighted to read. Art Graders merges high intensity, time sensitive extraction challenges on the surface with strategic survival elements below ground where progression is closely tied to your workshop. Building and upgrading crafting stations lets you build more advanced gear and equipment like advanced weapon mods or unique gadgets. You can expand your workshop to hold more crafting stations. So extractions will be under time pressure which I'll come back to shortly, often with a quest in mind. And once we're extracted out of the round, we'll have the opportunity to craft items in our workshop, which we can upgrade stations in over time. This sounds excellent to me, especially that there'll be weapon mods and craftable gadgets. The traders in Speranza give you quests in exchange for extra currency and experience, as well as the occasional items. The traders offer different items and equipment based on their specialties. You can invest experience into a skill tree that lets you refine your own place style. The tech test also features its own battle pass with unique rewards as you progress. So the traders will be our go-to for quests which come with their rewards and we can also buy items from them if we can't find them during a round or craft them ourselves for some reason. The fact there's a skill tree is one of the things I was most pleased to read. I really like the idea that we can differentiate our characters from those of other players and start to form our own individual strengths and playstyle. Of course all of this doesn't really tell us what the out of round experience will actually be like. With art graders having recently moved from a free to play to a $40 game, I'd expect that out of round environment to probably be pretty menu like rather than being a completely immersive environment. I think what's most important and pleasing though is that we have all these features to look forward to as part of a tech test, knowing that whatever they're like, they'll likely improve from here. So this sounds like a solid win on the out of game front to me. Before we dive into the teaser breakdown, we got some other info from the Google Doc. The rust belt is lethal and you can stay on the surface for too long. A single round is up to 30 minutes in length. 30 minutes for a round sounds quite short to me. I think I would have preferred up to 45 minutes but this is exactly the sort of thing a tech test is for and Bart can always change it down the track if it feels too short. As the round progresses some of the extraction points will shut down limiting your options to get back underground. That sounds good and will definitely add tension to the game with the developers having previously said that they want the game to have wide appeal, I'd expect that info about which extraction points are closing soon and where they are will be readily conveyed to us. There are world activities scattered around each map with extra rewards if you complete them. It's been previously mentioned that we can complete activities like disrupting arc probes, so this is probably the sort of activity they mean, which anyone can do if they happen upon them while they're in a round. You can play solo or with friends in groups of two or three, you can queue up for matchmaking if you don't have a group. So squads of up to three which we already knew. From that description it sounds like everyone, solos and squads are going to be thrown in the same round together and if that's the case it'll be curious to see what the feedback from the community is. This could be one of the things that Embark want to test. Security measures are implemented including anti-cheat. Great stuff, I'm pleased to hear that. The game has both squad and proximity VoIP. Proximity VoIP will be interesting. With that in place, there should be opportunities to squad up with other players already in the round, so the game could take on an almost DayZ kind of feel where sometimes you make a friend during the round, other times they just want to try and put a bullet between your eyes. There's going to be lots of interesting outcomes in this playtest for sure, but that's clearly what Embark Studios is after, and I reckon good on them for treating a playtest as an opportunity to improve the game and not just a marketing beat. It's refreshing. Okay let's dive into a breakdown of the teaser. The teaser runs a total of around 45 seconds but out of that there's about 26 seconds of action. The teaser opens with a group of three raiders walking through what is clearly some sort of deployment tunnel with these capsules on rails likely being how we access the surface. You immediately get a sense of a relatively rundown underground colony at work with people working in a space with rusted walls and junk lying around. We see our raider enter the capsule alone in what's probably some sort of start of 
background cutscene. The cosmetics here have a mid 20th century motor racing look to them and there's a logo on the side of the helmet and then also on their jacket for the law hounds amongst you. We then see a brief launch tunnel animation which has pretty much been unchanged since the very first trailer for the game. A raider then emerges through a door, we saw the shot in the original teaser for the playtest over a month ago. Then we get our first look at the environment. Having attended the press event held over a month ago I can tell you that this area is known as the Buried City. The other thing we can talk about here is a potential change in the location the game is based around. Previously I made a video showing that a lot of the environment was based on Embark Studios photogrammetry trips to Tenerife and Iceland but here we can immediately see this environment has architecture from Italy and it's most likely Naples as I've seen this reported elsewhere and initially thought it was a mistake but now I think we can probably conclude that with the change from a PvE to a PvPVE shooter Embark probably decided decided to make some wholesale changes to the game's environment too. It's worth mentioning that during the playtest we might see some temporary assets in the environment, for instance this statue here being the Greek slave statue that is seen on the Monaco map of the finals, so Embark might be using a few assets from that game until Ark Raider's environment is fully fleshed out. We move to a shot that I'd previously watched during the press event. Two raiders are looting a downed Ark machine in the buried city while they keep a close eye on other Ark nearby. I can tell you that the sign with an M on it on the right is a metro station and this is the railing for the stairs going underground to it. The metro stations in the buried city can act as extraction points where your team can call in a train for your extraction. You get a real sense of time here with obviously decades or even hundreds of years having passed since this was a thriving city. Another sweeping view of the buried city, this environment looks amazing. This tower looks like it might be accessible as a good sniping location and you can see that some of the roofs have access points on them, meaning you might be able to climb up out onto the rooftops which will make for some great verticality and varied engagement. Also the depth of the sand dunes might provide us access to upper levels of some of the buildings. There are a lot of satellite dishes on the roofs and I wonder if these will be associated with some kind of quest. We see a wind turbine in the background, what looks like a derelict motorway bridge as well as this unusually modern tower. Then we move to the interior of some sort of industrial building, the lighting here is fantastic. It's probably not far off having to use a flashlight inside. In the middle here looks like some sort of backpack so that might be part of the loot we'll see. And I'm sure the easter egg hunters amongst you will be getting PTSD from seeing a whiteboard with some writing on it here on the right. The trailer then moves from those environment focus scenes to a rapid sequence of gameplay shots. Firstly we start to see some game lore introduced with this sign graffitied in Italian which translates to only the rich get away from this crap. So maybe some narrative there about those who escaped and those who were left behind. We also have our first proper look at the game's HUD. On the left we have the three squad members, I'm assuming the length and health bar on Nokens simply indicates who our player is rather than them actually having increased health. The blue bars likely indicate some sort of varied armour with three variations in strength shown here. The bar in the middle, if this is a normal kind of HUD, is probably an endurance bar for sprinting which would mean you have to use your sprinting wisely. On the right we can see the character has a pistol called a Burletta equipped which holds 12 rounds and they have 88 in total. An ice axe which we've seen previously appears to be the main melee weapon and then a bandage on the left and I'm not sure what this object is at the top, possibly binoculars in profile. Your squad mates have tags which I'm assuming will remain no matter how far away they are as that would fit a game with wide appeal that Embark have said they're aiming for. Right in the middle of the screen you can see when not aiming down sight you have a single little dot for a crosshair and later in the video it's shown as a normal crosshair. And a compass at the top with the four cardinal and four intercardinal directions shown. I'd like to have the option to see numbers here as well for calling out precise directions for my squad but maybe these will suffice. If we're in the buried city then I'm guessing these symbols represent trains and therefore the metro station extraction points so you can easily see what direction they are if you're in a hurry. Lots of derelict vehicles here too which could make for possible loot locations and again such great lighting with this low light across the landscape. I can see a lot of would-be video game photographers enjoying this game. 
In this scene, we see the squad using a zip line to traverse between rooftops, so we're definitely going to have some rooftop play, which is cool. These birds have also taken off from the squad's movement, a feature I saw in the video we were shown at the previous press event. It's a neat little environmental tell for when players are nearby. And you can see in this building that there's going to be multiple levels to explore. The buried city also looks like a decent sized map given the distance to these more modern buildings in the background. On the left we see a green marker which shows that one of the squad is behind us and on the right we see what looks like a blue waypoint marker that our player has probably marked on the map. And a really nice view of this player's backpack as well, lots of detail in the cosmetics here. The player is then engaging with a couple of smaller airborne arc machines and we see that they have taken a hit at some point with their health bar down a little. They get a hit on one of the arc propellers in the last few frames of this shot. Here we see an airborne arc being downed over the entrance to one of the metro extraction points and you can see here that you can switch from right handed to left handed stances for holding your weapon allowing you to provide some cover for your body when shooting from behind cover no matter which way you're facing. Now we move to a very dark interior where the players are using their flashlights and engaging an arc or other players at ground level. On the right seems to be some sort of light sensor scanning the area. Again the environment here looks so good. We can also see some sort of automatic weapon is now in the player's kit but not equipped. And in the next shot we see it's called a Tempest Assault Rifle with 25 rounds available out of 235 that they're carrying. We can also see that our player has pinged another raider. And on the floor here is some object bouncing, maybe a smoke grenade. Outdoors again we see our player has a suppressor added to their weapon. It's likely one of the modifications we can craft or loot. All members of the squad appear to have taken some damage to their armour. And in front of us it looks like a smoke grenade has been set off which looks like it covers a decent area and provides substantial cover. At the top of the screen one of those train symbols on the compass is showing that they represent Northern Station which is about 240 metres away. Then we get just a couple of frames in the dark interior showing our teammate has found some loot described as plastic parts and it looks like we'll see these little circles to indicate loot when we're close enough to it which again would fit with the game being a more casual style of extraction shooter rather than one where loot isn't readily shown to us. Back outside with a really nice view our player Noken has pinged an arc known as a hornet and we see that the green squad member N8 has also pinged one with the symbol of an arc shown on the right here. Our player's endurance bar is also showing that they're currently recovering from a sprint. In the next shot we see our player in the left-handed stance aiming near a raider who isn't part of their squad who's just taken down an airborne arc. The game's definitely going to have this ebb and flow of fighting arc sometimes alongside raiders who aren't part of your squad and pvp combat and this shot kind of sums that up pretty nicely. Now our player is climbing onto a truck and Buck Studios are always so good on the movement and mantling animations I'm expecting that mantling objects and arc raiders will be no exception. And now they're using their ice axe which is actually referred to as a raider tool to breach and search under the hood of a car. Again you can see how this option for looting will be pretty clearly conveyed to us. This kind of variation in looting in addition to simply finding items and collecting them is something that I've been hoping the game will include. Then a quick shot of an engagement where some sort of pyro has been set off. We can also see that one of the squad's health is critically low. We don't know much about what the options will be for reviving players and if we can do it, which I'm thinking will be quite likely given we're in Barker positioning the game, whether we'll also be able to revive players that aren't part of our squad which might come with its own complications. At the very end of the teaser here we get some rapid jumps back and forth between this previous scene and the engagement with the pyro where we can now more clearly see the opponent. It also looks like the flare that's released from a player when they die is set off on the left here although our teammate looks like they still have some health here so maybe this is from an opponent between us and our teammate. And then the trailer wraps up with the dates for the tech test and the prompt to sign up for it. So that's my breakdown of the teaser and all the info about the playtest. What do you think about what you've seen so far? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video to the end and thank you to the members of my channel for their ongoing support. It is greatly appreciated. Do the usual YouTube business if you want to see more videos from me from now on. Give a like or comment as you see fit and enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha. Stay strong. Everybody knows the world ain't right down on your knees, get up and fight.